Hey, I hope you don't mind if I pause that for a little bit. We will get back to it, but first I need to give you a little bit of background so that this video makes more sense. If this is the first time you're seeing me, I run a micro sticker shop on Etsy that I am trying to grow into a monster business. And for the last six months, I have been using this little Cricut Maker 3 behind me to run my business until it got to the point where it wasn't able to keep up with the volume of orders I was getting. At that point, I had a decision to make. I either get another Cricut Maker 3 so that I have two and we become a purple or I don't think it's time for us to move on. So please, 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 I, this is hard, I know, but just let me get this out. There's more. There's someone else. All right, so let's get back to the race and see which machine does better when it comes to print and cut stickers. The process of loading the mats is actually more manual with the craft tech. There is a lever on the back right side of the machine that is used to lift and lower the rollers, which is what keeps the mats in place. You also have to use the buttons to manually move the sensor over the very first registration marks in the bottom right corner. But once you do that and you initiate the cut, you will see the machine reads the registration marks very, very quickly compared to the Cricut Maker 3 where it's more automated but the registration marks are read very very slowly. As you can see the graph tech is already done and now it is in the cutting phase and the Cricut Maker 3 is still looking for the last registration marks there and unfortunately the Cricut Maker 3 is also a lot more inaccurate when it's reading the registration marks. Sometimes it'll just not be able to read them at all if your materials are shiny or it will sometimes read it but then just the cuts will be a little bit off center and I find that happens about 10 to 20 percent of the time which can be frustrating. <laughs> Both machines are cutting the same vinyl stickers that are laminated with Oracal 210 and they are the same amount of stickers, the same size of stickers. They're just prepared on two different programs that's why they look a little bit different. The Craft Tech it was prepared in Adobe Illustrator and the Cricut Maker 3 was prepared in design space. And there you have it, the Graph Tech is now finished with the cutting and that took about a minute and 45 seconds and the Cricut Maker 3 is still at the very top of the page so in the interest of saving time I am going to speed up the video but we'll be able to compare the timestamps at the very end. So as you can see, the Graph Tech won by a large margin and it's set only on 20 speed and it actually goes up to 60, although it's not recommended to go that high. <laughs> I want to say that this video inherently is an unfair comparison as these two machines are at two very different price points. The Cricut Maker 3 being around $400 and the 15 inch version of the Graph Tech CE7000, which is the one that I have, costs about $1,400, so that is a $1,000 price difference. Uh, the CE7000 also is available in two other sizes. One is 24 inches for $1,900 and the other is 15 inches for $4,900. So with this wide gap in pricing, obviously the Graph Tech is going to dominate any comparisons when it comes to like cutting speed or cutting accuracy. Uh, but this video is more about my transition from using the Cricut Maker 3 to the CE7000 for my sticker shop and if I am happy with that decision I made and if it is worth the price difference or not. So straight off the bat I want to say if you are a hobbyist crafter or someone who just doesn't do well with technology or using complex machines then I would recommend you stick with the Cricut Maker 3. Um, Cricut has done a great job making their products very easy to use for consumers whereas the Graph Tech is a little bit more of like a prosumer machine. Um, with the Cricut, you will get up and running within a few hours. Um, their design software um, called Design Space is very easy to learn and you kind of get handheld through everything. There's lots of different projects and lots of different instructional videos and things you will find online, um, both from Cricut and also from just users. Because the machine is so popular, uh, you can search here on YouTube and find hundreds of videos of how to use the machine, right? On the flip side, with the Graph Tech, there are very few resources online since the machine is a lot less widely owned. And also since most people who are using it are using it more for a commercial purpose, they're typically not really making a lot of videos sharing like how to do things and sharing their 
you know, industry secrets, I guess. <laughs> so Craft Tech, um, they do have a playlist of videos on their website and on YouTube that walk you through learning the machine, which if you are considering even thinking about buying the machine, I would suggest you watch all of the videos first before you buy one. Um, I will link the playlist in the description. However, I wish the videos were a little more detailed and they don't really provide you the exact settings you will need. Since those settings will vary from user to user, they don't really give you like any like recommended settings or anything like that. Um, the Graphtech website is also pretty sparse compared to the Cricut one and there are no forums or FAQs or like lots of sources to get help there. Um, for me, downloading the software from Graphtech website was also a little challenging. I don't know if it was because they were doing maintenance or something, but it kept routing me to the Japanese version of the website and the downloads were really, really slow. But I have revisited the site recently and it doesn't seem to be doing that anymore. So I think maybe I just had some bad luck. Um, the cutting settings are where I struggled the most. <laughs> With Cricut, your pressure and cutting settings are pretty much already preset so when you go to design space there's already a list of like hundreds um, of materials that you can use any material that you can think of is in there so the settings are already in there and then you can always look at those settings and then adjust them for your purposes um, and the Cricut Maker also has something called an auto blade which is means that the blade how much of the blade sticking out of like the cutter is kind of determined by the settings of the machine it like changes but with craft tech you do have to manually adjust the, the blade and then also manually set your pressure settings so there are not really any presets that are included uh, for specific materials or anything and i didn't find really any guidance online about anything like that there is a built-in tool to the machine that you can use to determine how much of the blade you expose but it was kind of a little bit difficult for me to use there is also a built-in tool to help you do test cuts so that you can determine what the best pressure settings for your uh, materials should be so what happens is that it cuts like three little squares and three little triangles and then you can kind of see which one is better is it you know that do you need more pressure or less pressure and then you kind of just keep doing that until you get the perfect settings um, it does take a little bit of time it took me a couple of hours to kind of figure that all out um, and to be honest, I don't even know if I still have the most ideal settings, but currently I'm still kind of figuring it all out, but I am able to cut die cut stickers at this point. So that is what I needed for my purposes. So I'm happy at this moment, but we shall see when I need to figure out other settings. One big difference that I appreciate with the Graph Tech is that it can cut with more pressure. So some thicker materials that the Cricut would need to cut two or three times can be cut once with the CE7000. For instance, I make um, laminated holographic vinyl stickers and I've always had it cut twice with the Cricut and now um, when I'm using the Graph Tech, it only just does one pass. So with those die cut stickers, I'm able to save pretty much half the time now that it only does that one cutting pass. The other part of the transition that took a long time for me was learning how to make the cut lines for the Graph Tech. If you're using the Cricut Maker 3 in Design Space, it's pretty simple to upload your image and then it creates the cut lines automatically. You can adjust it and then you can also make like your offsets or anything like that. It's pretty simple. With Graph Tech, you either have to use their standalone software, which is called Graph Tech Studio, or you can opt to use the plugin for either Adobe Illustrator or for Corel Draw. Since I already had Illustrator and I was somewhat familiar with it, I decided to use Illustrator. So essentially in Illustrator, you have to just make paths and those paths are what the CE7000 reads as the cut lines. So definitely this had a higher learning curve than design space, um, but I will say though that once you kind of get the hang of it, I personally now do prefer using the, the Adobe Illustrator way, just because I feel like I have more control and it's also a lot less laggy. That is one of my main gripes I had with design space is that because it was like an online um, it was like all done online. It was very slow sometimes, um, even with me having a very, very high, fast computer and also a high speed internet connection, it was sometimes very, very laggy. Um, and then also just kind of uploading the images one by one sometimes just took a lot of time at some point. Um, and then trying to like manage all of that online, I didn't really enjoy that. Now I can kind of manage all of my files on my computer and then just kind of pull them all into Illustrator and there's virtually just no lag with that. So I now do prefer that method. 
So after that awkward transition phase, I am now using the GraphTech CE7000 for my sticker shop 100% of the time. And to be honest, I'm not even using the machine at its full potential yet because the machine really is designed to cut larger sheets of vinyl without a mat, you know, like the kind of vinyl that you get on rolls. But because I don't really have that printer yet to print on rolls, and also I have a lot of letter size vinyl sheets in stock, I'm still making um, all my cuts on a mat. So in essence, I'm using the GraphTech the same way I use my Quicken Maker 3 right now. Uh, but I am excited for the future when I do start being able to print on vinyl sheets. I, there is also like a barcode system that you can um, use and then also there's like a perforation cut option that you can use too. So in essence, the blade will go in and out, in and out, in and out like that so that the sticker doesn't fall off the sheet. Um, and in that way, you can do like a contour cut inside, which is like a kiss cut, and then that perforation cut outside. So in that way, then without using a mat, the sticker won't fall off of the sheet while you're cutting it, right? It'll still stay on and then you can pop it off afterwards. So that I'm very excited for all of that in the future, but for now, we're just using it this way. <laughs> so now that I've used the GraphTech CE7000 for one month, the $1,000 question is, is the GraphTech worth the extra $1,000? For me, for my purposes, my answer is going to be absolutely. <laughs> for me, the speed of the machine and the accuracy the way the sensors are able to read all the registration marks really, really well, that has been the clincher. And the deal breaker with the Cricut Maker 3 has always been for me, the accuracy of the print then cut stickers. So even if I had three Cricut Makers, which would cost the same as one GraphTech, sure I'd be able to cut more stickers faster, but I would still have 10 to 20% of those print and cuts go wrong. So with the GraphTech, not counting stupid things that I've done, user error, I've had maybe two to three sheets go wrong in one month. Wow, that's how many would go wrong with the Cricut Maker in one day. So in the long run, I will make the money back just on savings from vinyl and ink and laminate that I've wasted just on the daily with the Cricut Maker 3 just messing up. And even if that wasn't the case, the daily frustration I would have when I'm trying to rush to get my orders out and then I have to reprint again and redo everything and relaminate again, that saving me from that is priceless. <laughs> so if I were to put my 2020 hindsight glasses on and I could go back to the opening of my sticker shop, I would really just skip getting the Cricut Maker 3 and I would have just went to the GraphTech CE 7000 and just gotten that and then just spent a full week just learning the machine really well before I even launched my store. Um, but if I were to be needing a machine just for my hobbies, for crafting and making things, making cards and stickers for myself, then I would definitely go with the Cricut Maker 3. And that's it for this video. Leave me any questions you may have about either machine and I will respond or make a future video that covers that topic. Thank you for watching. See ya.